Hey guys, it's Colby. Hello. Hope you guys have had a great week so far and a great week since I last saw you. Um, I'm really not going to do a long intro this time because I just really want to jump into this. I'm super on fire for what I'm about to talk to you guys about. Um, so I just got home from church, so I'm a little like totally in the Holy Spirit right now and it's great. Uh, and that's what I'm about to kind of say to you isn't what we just heard at church, even though that was fabulous. And uh, go to thebelonging.co online and you can watch it live stream. That's my church, The Belonging. It's amazing. If you're ever in Nashville, go to it. It's on Tuesday nights. Um, oh, I just gave away my name. It's okay. I'm going to post it tomorrow or today. Anyways, um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, what I'm about to share with you guys has been something that literally in the last like three days I have shared to four different people um, and it's it hasn't been because I've purposely wanted to share this passage or this thing that the Lord's revealed to me or whatever. Um, it's just been because they've all just had not the same situations, but just similar things where I was just like, all right, Lord's just to speaking through me right now. And, uh, so I want to share it with you guys. Um, so I'll just jump right into the verse or it's a passage, Matthew chapter 15. Um, verse starts at verse 21. It says, Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Sorry, Jesus. Don't know how to pronounce these. Whatever. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him, pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all of her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, That's true, Lord, but even the dogs are allowed to eat scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, Your faith is great. Your request is granted, and her daughter was instantly healed. I don't know about you guys. And you guys know that when I'm talking and I'm telling, saying stuff to you guys, I'm speaking to myself, and it's out of experience and stuff that I still need to learn. It's not me preaching at you. I'm talking with you. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had moments when you feel like you are asking the Lord for something, and it's just silent. Um, I was talking to a friend the other day and he was like, I just, I just, you know, I don't know how to feel and, um, and I just, I can't feel God's love and there's just no hope. And I've asked him why I am this way or why this is the way that things have been. And he's just so silent and I've done everything I can. And I said, um, no, no, you haven't. You haven't done everything you can because you're until you're laying on the ground, you don't even have the strength to walk because you have given everything in your power to worship him and to give him everything. You haven't done everything. And I was talking to another friend and um, they were saying how they, you know, they're, they just don't know what to do and uh, they feel like they can't hear the Lord and, um, and all of this stuff. And um, I know I'm moving around, guys, because I'm just so like... The Lord is just, guys, the Lord is just moving right now. Um, and I just said, you know what? Just because you don't hear him the first time doesn't mean you give up. And so many of us do that. If we ask the Lord for something and we don't hear it tomorrow or the next day or the next week or even the next month or the next year, like, we just give up. We ask him once, we don't, we either don't get the answer that we want or we don't hear anything um and we're just done and in this passage why I love this is because when I first read this the first time I ever read this was two years ago a friend of mine sent to me and we would send each other scriptures and stuff and say what do you think this is and I was like I got no clue like the Lord's a little Jesus was a little hasty in here um and then just a couple months ago it just kind of was revealed to me through somebody talking about it and just all that stuff and the first time she, the Gentile woman, goes to Jesus, um, he literally ignores her, says he didn't even say a word. 
Like, can you imagine standing there, ask, standing there looking at a friend of yours and saying, hey, could you pass me that water bottle? And they literally are like, flat out ignore you. Like, you would be, you'd be mad. You would be, I would, y'all, I'd be like, uh, hello, you little Rudy McPooty, like, pass me the water bottle. I mean, I don't know why I use water bottle, whatever. But, like, we would be livid. Jesus literally ignores this woman when she asks him for something, for healing for her daughter. He ignores her. So she goes back again, and he says, I, I came to, uh, Find the lost, what is it that he said? Now it's going to bother me if I don't know. And he says, uh, he says, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. And she worshipped him. She got on the ground. She worshipped him. She said, Lord, Lord, please, Lord, please. And then he goes, he turns around and says, I'm not going to give food that was meant for the children to the dogs. Calls her a dog. Y'all, if one of my friends looked at me and was like, your dog, I ain't giving you nothing like you, whatever. I'd be like, excuse me, I'm God's creation. No, but really, like, think about it. Put yourself in her shoes. Yet, in the Bible, it's so funny because it does, it twists everything, and the Bible always does the opposite and says to do the opposite of what we do in this world. And if somebody ignores you or um, says something hateful to you or all this, then our natural thing is to be like, whatever, screw you, all right, I'm done, whatever. And that's what we do with God, is we don't get the answer, we're ignored, or he doesn't answer us right away, and we're done, or we won't get the answer that we want, and we're done, whatever. But this passage is showing that it was kind of a test for the woman, and it was Jesus just, you know, I think that it was him just being like, I'm going to ignore you, and I'm going to insult you, and then I'm going to insult you even more. And let's see where you are then. Because if you still want it, and if you still pursued me, and you've still just continued to ask, then you know what? I'm proud of you, and there you go. Because sometimes the Lord just wants to see how bad we want something, or how trusting we're going to be. Or if we're going to, if we don't hear him right away, get down on our knees. If we were standing the first time, get down on our knees the second time and say, all right, no, Lord, I'm going to ask you again. And I know I may not hear you right now. I may not got, have the answer yet. And I, you know, whatever. But he's saying he wants to see how bad we want it, guys. Because, I mean, sometimes... It is nice. You know, can you agree that in a friendship, it, it, it's nice sometimes to see that you're not the only one who wants a friendship so bad. We feel good when our, you know, friend is like, hey, let's hang out. And it's not always us saying, let's hang out, let's hang out. They do it too. The Lord's the same way. He, he, wants, he wants to feel wanted because just like we want to feel wanted. And, and I'll just say that... Um, when I say, you know, like, we'll hear him or whatever, I I um, am not the person who's clearly 100% heard God's voice, like, hello, Colby. Like, I never have. And I honestly always thought that there was something wrong with me and something weird about that. And then I read Love Does by Bob Goff. And there's literally a chapter in there. And he says, I've never heard God's voice. And I always thought literally just everything that I've felt and um, just helped me to realize that, like, that's okay. We don't have to hear God's voice by him, you know, speaking in your ear. And I totally think some people do. But I think that the Lord chooses and decides to speak to people in different ways. He can speak to you through a friend or through your pastor or, you know, through a song on the radio. And even if it's not a Christian song, I totally think that there are secular songs that can just hit you. And we can, we interpret, everybody interprets something differently. Um... And so if you're not one of those people or you don't feel like you've ever heard God's voice or maybe you have, that's awesome. But if you haven't, there's nothing wrong with you. When I say we hear God, it just means that there's confirmation somewhere. You could see a sign on the on a billboard that just says, you know, what you've been praying for. Or hear on the radio, word for word, what you've been praying for. Or somebody says, hey, I just feel like I need to let you know this. And that's, that's God. Because we don't always have to just hear him completely in our in our minds and hear his voice because sometimes sometimes you just don't but you just have to always be listening for other ways that he is speaking to you even if it's not him 
speaking to you like, hey, hey, Colby, so um, this is what I want you to do, and this, no, the Lord's like, how much are you going to trust me? Are you going to turn away, and, you know, are you going to just not do what I ask, or are you just going to get mad at me if I don't answer you right away? What are you going to do? What do you, when it comes down to it, are you going to be like her and are you going to keep going after God and keep asking and keep pursuing and keep saying, Lord, please, Lord, please, I know you're not answering me right now, but I know you can hear me and please, God, I trust you. I trust you and I know you can do this and I'm going to keep asking until it's done. Which one do you want to be? Do you want to be her? Or there's another story where a man comes up to Jesus and he says, what do I have to do to follow you? He says, Drop everything. He was a wealthy man. He says, literally, give everything away. Give it away. And the man, he's like, can't do it. And turns away. And he misses out on what could have been. So which one do you want to be? So as you go about your week, think about, are there things that you've been asking for? Or asking for clarity about? Or what? Because the Lord, eventually, in time, He will answer you. I, uh... The last like week and a half-ish, I was asking the Lord, I was like, all right, just show me if this is of you or if it's not of you, just show me, just show me. And uh, for a couple weeks actually now, and I just, I'm like, gosh, Lord, I just, I just need to know, like, if this isn't of you, then I want to walk away. But if it is, then I, I can have peace. And, um, and he showed me and it took some time. It didn't, he didn't show me day, the first day I asked. Show me, he showed me like, what, the 18,000th time I had asked? Like, sometimes it just takes diligence and pursuing. So, just pursue him this week. Um, this was a super long video, but you know, when the Lord's working, the Lord's working. What can you do? Um, so, uh, yeah, this week, just go about your week and think about the things that you've been asking and you haven't heard yet. And don't think that's him, you know, he's like... I just don't care about you. It has nothing to do with caring. If anything, he he does tests like that, like in Matthew 15, um, to better us and to strengthen us because there is just nothing like when you just keep asking and keep asking and when you ask so much that you are so weak and by the last time that you ask right before he answers, you it, it is such a struggle to even get the words out. And then he's like, yes or no. Or, yeah, this is good, this is bad, whatever. And then it just rejuvenates you and you're just like, oh man, that was so worth it because it is. You think that that woman didn't think that it was worth it? Didn't think that being ignored and insulted and all of that was worth having her daughter healed? Her demon-possessed daughter? It was. And it's going to be worth it for you. It was worth it for me. And it's a beautiful thing. And... We were never told that our walks are going to be easy. We actually were kind of told that they're going to be hard, very hard, but that he would be with us every step of the way. Just sometimes we got to go after it with everything in us. So uh, I love you guys. Thanks for watching and um, see you guys soon. Bye.